Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Cross Christian Fellowship, Route 66. Uh, we're a relatively new church plant, and uh, the Lord has moved us to a new location, and we're just so excited about that. If, and, uh, we, uh, well, this week it will be the last time that we'll be meeting here at uh, 6.30 for next week, Mar uh, March 2nd, we'll have our new hours, which will be Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, if you would be so kind as to turn off your, or lower your cell phones, or even turn them off, we really appreciate that. We don't take a formal offering. However, we have a, a brown uh, a cabinet in the back with a little brown box there that uh, for your tithes, offerings, and your prayer requests. And there's some, also some information about the Cross Christian Fellowship Route 66 there as well. Lula, we'll be having our Easter sunrise service. Uh, I'm not exactly sure when the date is, but it'll, uh, we'll, we'll inform you. But it's going to be here at the at the Montgomery Park at 7 a.m. So that's that's coming about. Uh, Children's Church will be uh, right after worship service, services and uh, at the uh, children's worship room and get with Rebecca on that, the, the young kids. Uh, Swordfish meets the fourth Sunday of the month at 4.30 here uh, at this location. Prayer Ministry, which will be... Uh, it's the first uh, Saturday of the month as well, from 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, that's coming up uh, next next Saturday. Small groups uh, Bible study. Uh, we uh, we're currently uh, uh, meeting Monday nights, but that has been currently postponed into further notice until further notice. Tuesday night is the recovery in action and that is at the brew at 311 uh, gold uh, southwest and that's a, a mentor type study and it's focused on uh, recovering from addictions oh I, I did forget something else that i should have mentioned uh, we are uh, continued in search of any decent washed or uh, clothing and non-perishable food items including pre-packaged snacks uh, that we use for the less fortunate when we go on our, our outreaches on Saturday uh, nights. You can, uh, you can uh, follow us through the web, uh, 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 Facebook, and uh, through, the, through the internet. Uh, we have our, uh, uh, our, our location there. So there's a lot of helpful information, a lot of information that tells about uh, Cross Christian Fellowship and uh, some, uh, some wonderful information about what the Lord is doing in this, in this church as well. If, uh, join me in a word of service and we'll, uh, a word of prayer and we'll begin tonight's services. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much and praise you and honor you and, and glorify you, Lord. And just uh, thank you for uh, this body of believers, Lord, and and that uh, we continue to re with it, that, that you continue to use us and that we continue to be used by you, Lord, and, uh, throughout this neighborhood. And that uh, that uh, we uh, can uh, go out to the neighborhood, Lord, and and, uh, and invite people, invite people to know who you are, uh, your son Jesus, and, and uh, all that you offer us and the promises that you offer us and salvation that you, that you give to us uh, that comes only through uh, the blood of your son Jesus. So, so just use this church in a mighty way, Lord, and, and that, uh, that, uh, that we're, uh, that we're eager, eager to uh, disciple people and and not just by you know all the head knowledge that we have that uh, it doesn't do us no good by having so much knowledge of uh, about Christianity. We want to know about you, Lord. 
but we want to be uh, uh, um, make re uh, have relationships with others, and and that's how the gospel is spoken, and that's the way Jesus did it, and that's the way He would have us do it, Lord. So that uh, we be uh, a willing body of believers to to do do uh, such a thing as that, and and uh, as and uh, using your Son Jesus as an example in, in what he wants us to do. So bless tonight's services, Lord, and, and bless Mark, and just uh, uh, just uh, speak through him uh, what you want him to, uh, the message that you put on his heart, Lord, to deliver to us tonight, and uh, that uh, we would, uh, that we would not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word, and, and uh, and we just, uh, we lift up the, the praise uh, team to you, Lord, and just uh, that they uh, lead us in praise and worship to you and bless the, uh, them and anoint their voices, their hands, their feet, and, and, uh, and all that they bring to uh, uh, bringing praise and honor and glory to you, Lord. So thank you so much. We love you. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome, will you all please stand as we praise God?
because, Lord, you are so awesome that in response to everything that you've done for us, Lord God, we just want to let go of everything that's holding us back in this world from serving you. We want to let go of all the things that we were that we were used to, that we were comfortable in, Lord God. We want to leave that in the past, Lord, and we want to just trust you with everything we got. We want to live with abandon, Lord.
Jesus Messiah. I know that there's some confusion about Easter Sunday this year. Oh, it's April no, no. 20th, not March 30th. <laughs> it's okay. So, it's okay. No worries. No worries. Pastor Doug did fine. I I watched the video from last week. It was awesome. Mike did an awesome teaching on the armor of God. Um, so it was it was a good good thing. Good reminder. Um, because we're going through spiritual battles, we go, we always deal with spiritual battles on a daily basis. Um, you know, and thinking about how God is just in control of it all, no matter what. You know, we we we, we know that we're in spiritual battles. We the, the the battles that we deal with is not of the flesh. Um, we have to remember that when we're dealing with other people, when when tempers fly, it's not so much. That we need to, we, we shouldn't take it personally because it's just the, the principalities come try to bring division, especially when there's brothers and sisters. So, um, so we, we that was such an awesome message listening to last week. Thanks for that, Mike. It was an awesome reminder for me as well. So, 
Um, it was nice to take a break with my wife. We got, did a little getaway, and it was nice to just go and relax and um, know that you guys were safe here and um, and that we signed it. It was literally we signed the lease on Monday, and we were moving in on Wednesday. So that was no. I just want to say thanks to Pastor Bernard, Pastor Mike, to Raymond, um, to Mark for for your guys's help, hard work last week um, to get it set up so everybody can be in here. Um, and Bernard and I have been working diligently this week. You see, there's a bunch of changes since last week, um, and there'll be more changes coming as we as we get to settle down. And um, so I'm just looking forward to see what God's going to do. Um, but anyway. Back to what I was talking about Easter Sunday. So Easter Sunday, in the programs it says that we're going to have a 10 o'clock service. But you know what I've been praying? This is what we're going to do. So we're going to have our Easter sunrise service at 7 o'clock over in Montgomery Park across the street, which is behind the library. Um, Toasted Bean is going to be with us. They're going to be providing coffee drinks, um, some, uh, some, some drinks at least. They said they might do some breakfast stuff, but they're going to play by ear. But definitely we're going to have some coffee drinks and, and some, some other types of drinks available. Um, and no cost. Mm -hmm. At no cost. Oh, that's good. Um, we're going to have... Uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean take advantage of them. <laughs> yeah, don't come with your 44. Yeah. <laughs> Please, they, these guys have really been generous. They've been they really, they're, they're awesome. Um, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt in Montgomery Park around 9 o'clock. Um, so, so we'll be there. Um, and what we're going to do, instead of a 10 o'clock service that Sunday, we're going to have, a, we're going to have an open house here. Um, so that we can greet people in the neighborhood and, and, and just get to know people. So we're going to have a, what we'll do is we'll have like a, we'll have members of the fellowship um, do like a potluck type of breakfast. So people can come in and, and just an open house. Uh, so that'll be our official kickoff. You know, we unofficially, unofficially started this last week. We'll unofficially start on Sundays next week. Uh, so remember, guys, don't show up Saturday night because there might not be anybody here. <laughs> but we will be here Sunday morning next week. So, um, and I know that there's some members who can't continue to join us, and that's and you know God has called them to to, to other places, and that's okay. Um, we just want to wish them well and, and know that we love them and they're welcome to be part of us anytime. Um, but with all this, you know, I was sitting down today, um, I was studying, I was studying Acts chapter 12, uh, reviewing it for today, and God had a different plan. God had a different plan. And so tonight's message is God's provision and timing. Um, because it, it really is the showing. I mean, it, look at what he did for us here. I mean, we for a year and a half, we're downtown, downtown Albuquerque. We're reaching out, due diligently, being faithful, reaching out to people down there, and God moves us here. So what does that do? What does that mean for our vision? Nothing. It means that we're still continuing with the vision that we've been doing, except, and, but we're in a different location. Um, what it, what's been really awesome, um, because I've been praying about this, and I'm like, okay, God, you, you provided a building for us, you've moved us, what, what's next? You know, what's next? And, and a lot of stuff that we've been able to, to put together, he's provided over the time that we've been downtown, and um, some stuff came this past week, more stuff's coming that God's providing, um, and I'm just, I'm just like hanging on, I'm like, okay, what's going, what's going to happen next? So that's why um, I think tonight that it's really perfect to talk about his provision and timing. He's provided many things for us. Uh, and his timing is not ours. Uh, we, think, we think we know what's going to be next, but we don't. We think we know what is going to happen, but we don't. So we just have to be faithful and praying. God's, God's vision for this fellowship has not changed. He may have moved us somewhere else, but it hasn't changed. We, we, with having Bernard here um, during the day, um, he's been able to contact people in the neighborhood um, that just stop by, asking questions, what's going on, people who need prayer. Um, just incidental, we, we, Bernard and I have been out here um, setting up, and people have been stopping by and asking questions. People are excited to see a fellowship here who's going to be available. Um, 
for them to come and ask questions, to have prayer, to be ministered to, and we're not even doing an active outreach yet. We haven't even actively, so, so hang on guys, because it's going to get fun. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. So why don't we go ahead and pray and we'll, we'll get into the message. Father, thank you so much for providing for us. Thank you so much for, for guiding us, growing us, preparing us for what you have next. Father, I just ask that you help us to continue to be strong in the, in the, in the faith, Help us to continue to be strong in this fellowship and continue to reach more people. Father, help us to remember that the division you've given us is to help cause a revival. And since you've put us here, Father, help us to, to be able to cause a revival to start in this neighborhood. And that, let it catch like a, a Holy Spirit wildfire that other people can, can see what you're doing. We thank you that, that you teach us that your timing is perfect and that you teach us to wait on you. And I just ask, Father, as we get into tonight's message, that you open our hearts, our ears, our minds to what you have to say to each and every one of us. We thank you and we praise you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, God doesn't work in the ways we expect him to, right? I mean, we, we even those of us who've been studying, we think we have it down at some point. And we realize we don't. We realize that God has a different plan. We realize that God is, is, is leading in a different direction. Every time we think we have something going, every time we think we know where we're going, God has something else going in mind for us. So we need to learn to align ourselves with him. We need to learn to align ourselves with him. If we haven't already done that, we need to. Because when we do, we'll be able to recognize when he's moving somewhere else or when he's taking us into a different direction. We'll be able to recognize the plans that he has for us. We'll be able to see the provisions he has for us, even when they're provisions we don't think we, we, we necessarily should have. So the first thing that we're going to look at tonight is that God's ways are not what we think. So if you have your Bibles, open up to Isaiah 55. Now I'm going to be reading out of the God's Word translation tonight. It's a little bit different than what I usually read out of, uh, but um, it was kind of, a, again, uh, God had a different plan for my, my prep, and so the only thing that I had available besides the King James Version, and I didn't want to try to trip over some of the words in the King James, I used the God's Word translation, which is also available to me. So, But anyway, it's a good translation. It, it breaks it down into modern language, and it, and it gives us an idea of what he's saying. So, God, so Isaiah 15, 5, we're going to look at verses 1 through 9. Listen. Whoever is thirsty, come to the water. Whoever, whoever has no money can come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk. You don't have to pay, it's free. Why do you spend money on what you cannot nourish what cannot nourish you and your wages on what does not satisfy you? Listen carefully to me. Eat what is good and enjoy the best foods. Enjoy your ears and come to me. Or I'm sorry, open your ears and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make an everlasting promise to you. The blessings I promised to David. I made him a witness to people. A leader and a commander for people. You will summon a nation that you don't know. And a nation that doesn't know you will run to you because of the Lord, your God. Because of the Holy One of Israel, he has honored you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let wicked people abandon their ways. Let evil people abandon their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord and he will show compassion to them. Let them return to our God because he will freely forgive them. My thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. How awesome to hear that, that when we're following God, when we're being obedient to what God is saying, that nations, he's saying that he's talking to Israel, saying that nations 
will run to you when they see what I'm doing through you when you're following me. <coughs> that works for us too. God is saying people will flock to us when we're following him. People will recognize that he's doing a work in our lives. People will, will come to us when he's changing us, as he's changing us. Can you turn off that stereo back there, please, because it's bleeding through the speakers. Thank you. And, and I don't know who's got uh, their text messaging off, but please turn the sound off because it is distracting. Um, sorry. So, so what it basically what it's talking about is that what we see is that God's ways is not ours. God is saying, follow me, because when you're doing things in your, your own fleshly way, you're going to push people away. When you're going to do things on your own accord, you're going to end up burning out. When you do things without following me, that's not honoring to me, you may not see that people come to you. You may have some followers, but they're only following you to try to get something from you. And then when they get what they want or what they think they need, they're going to leave you high and dry. But when we follow God, when we let God change our minds and our hearts, people recognize that. People will desire that. They'll desire that not because they're trying to get something from us, but they are because they want to see What's God doing in your life? They want to see that happening in their life. Let God change our hearts. Let God change our minds. Let Him come into us, into our, our lives totally, so that when He changes us, we won't even recognize ourselves. And we'll see people following us because of what He's doing. God provides for our needs. God provides for our needs. We just need to take him up on what he gives us. You know, I've, I've seen, I was, I was thinking, I was talking to, to a pastor last night, talking about a, a church, his church has a food pantry, which is something we're trying to, something similar we're trying to do here. And, and people come in and they get these expensive loaves of bread that are really good bread. And they hand them back and say, do you have white bread? These loaves of bread that they're being given are more nourishing and they're asking back for, for something that's processed and that's not the best for them. God provides for our needs. We just need to take them up on what he's going to give us because it's better for us than we realize. We, we, we can't just have these expectations. Excuse me. Yes? You're distracting, please. I'm not doing anything. We need to, we need to take him up and, and just not, not expect that if he gives us something that is not what we would necessarily think it was the best, or if the, the um, it's, it's instead of taking the ice cream or expecting ice cream when God gives us steak. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a toss-up. God gives us steak because steak is more nourishing for us, but we want the ice cream instead because it's sweet. What it, what's better, the steak or the, the ice cream, right? So we need to reach out and, and take the steak. Let's learn with the steak. So, but, it, but what the point I'm making is, is that these are people, some, we find some people are very picky when he provides. We need to trust that his provisions are perfect for us. Don't look for the ice cream when he's trying to give you a steak. Don't look for the white bread that's processed when he's trying to give you a grain bread that's better for you and actually will eliminate, can, can eliminate you or, or prevent you from getting diabetes or, or, or other things. Some people, the, the other thing that happens too is some people refuse to take what he gives because they're dealing with pride. Some people have pride issues. They, they have a hard time dealing with people trying to help them because they want to, I've been working for, I've been working all my life. And this is, this is, and this just happened to me. Working, being able to provide for myself, 
find myself in a situation where I have to ask for help. But rather than asking for help, I swallowed my pride and didn't. And found myself hungry. I'm sorry, I didn't swallow my pride. I hung on to my pride and found myself hungry. When I finally swallowed my pride and asked for help, provisions were made. And I didn't have to starve. People will not swallow their pride and ask for help. They rather suffer than ask for help. And it's a shame. But God will provide for our needs. God gives us. What's the greatest need that we have, guys? Salvation. The greatest need that we have is salvation. Remember, Paul talks about salvation as a gift from God. Nothing we can do will matter. It's not a gift if we don't take it. When we look at what Paul wrote to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 4, he says, Who says that you are any better than other people? Why do you have that wasn't given to you? If you were given what you have, why are you bragging as if it weren't a gift? You already have what you want. You have already become rich. You have become kings without us. I wish you were really kings so that we could be kings with you. As I see it, God has placed us apostles last in line, like people condemned to die. We have become a spectacle for people and angels to look at. We have given up our wisdom for Christ, but you have insight because of Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honored, but we are dishonored. To this moment, we are hungry, thirsty, poorly dressed, roughly treated, and homeless. We wear ourselves, excuse, wear ourselves out doing physical labor. When people verbally abuse us, we bless them. When people persecute us, we endure it. When our reputations are attacked, we remain courteous. Right now, we have become garbage in the eyes of the world and trash in the sight of all people. I'm not writing this to make you feel ashamed, but to instruct you as my dear children. You may have countless Christian guardians, but you don't have many spiritual fathers. I become your father in Christian life by telling you the good news about Christ Jesus, so I encourage you to imitate me. Put our pride aside. Look at the gift. Take it up. The gift is not just salvation. It's not just saying, Jesus, will you be my Lord and Savior? And doing nothing with it. It's saying, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. And by the way, I need help. By the way, I'm suffering from depression. By the way, I deal with anger. By the way, I have no, many needs that I know that only you could provide for. Please help me. Please help me. I'm putting my pride aside. And I'm going to take whatever you give me. Because I know it's better for me than what I have. What I've ever done for myself. He wants us to listen to him. He wants us to listen to him when it comes to, from, when it comes to direction. Do you remember that James wrote, we need to be quick to listen and slow to speak? You know, I've heard this many times, I've, I've pointed it out, but this is so true. We have two ears and one mouth. That means we need to listen twice as hard as we do need to speak. But I was just talking to my son about this earlier today, and talking about listening, it's not just letting the words come into our ears. Listening is such an active process. Listening is using our ears to hear the words come in. It's forcibly allowing our mouths not to open. I mean, it could be literal for some people, but it's just the idea of just not saying anything when somebody's talking. And using our eyes to watch. And learning, what is that person saying? But it's the same thing. How does that work when it comes to listening to God? Well, don't say nothing. When you're praying, when, you're, when you go to God, sometimes praying is just listening, not saying anything, clearing your mind, and then taking the Bible and opening it up and reading. What is he saying? 
And as you're reading, you're asking him, what are you telling me? What is it that you're trying to tell me? He wants us to listen when it comes for direction. I set out to establish this church, this ministry, in his name, in Christ's name. And said, God, Jesus, let no one come here because of anything that we're doing, but because of what you're doing through us. We could go out and we could borrow money and we could get a big building and we could put all this money into equipment and, and put it on a show. But it wouldn't be true to the conditions that I feel that Christ has given me. God has provided for me and continues to provide for me. God has provided for this fellowship and he opens up doors and we just need to walk through, walk in faith through them. See where he points us. I have asked, I have already said that, I already said this earlier, but I have asked, why did you bring us here? And I was praying about it. And at first, when we looked at the building, we were talking about, okay, well this can be kind of a respite to the people that we're reaching out to. Because it pulls them out of the area where we're reaching, where we're, we're reaching out to them. And that may be necessarily true, that we may, we, it still may be that. But again, God has opened up doors to reach out to people in this neighborhood. God has opened up doors to reach out to people in this neighborhood. God has opened up doors to reach out to people in Montgomery. God is God just widening what we're doing. He said, I want to do a work here. Unfortunately, there was a fellowship here for five years. And they didn't do the work called that God called them to do. So God moved them and brought us here. I'm not saying that they weren't being faithful. What I'm saying is that since we've been here, God has brought people to us already. So when we're listening to when it comes time for direction, it means not to look into the world for direction, but to Him. Don't look to worldly advice when it comes to spiritual matters. Worldly advice will tell us that we're crazy or that we need to allow the floor to be open for anybody to come in and speak their heart. And I mean anybody. Homosexuals, atheists. But that's not what God when we look to him, he says, stay to my word, stay true to my word, type teach my word, read my word, study my word, pray. It also means that we are to sit patiently. We are to sit patiently to hear his voice. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get impatient. I really do. Guys, I can tell you all the things that I can picture happening in this building that God has provided for us. And I've shared it a couple times with Bernard this past week and with, with a couple other people, but I've slowed my down myself down and said, wait a minute. God may only have us here for a season. So if we're here for a long period, we may do some, some other things that I can envision happening. But if we're not here for that long, We'll move forward and see where God wants us. We just, it's just a matter of learning to be just waiting on Him, being patient, and being a steward with what He gives us. Because I could see carpeted, I could see paint, I could see the drop ceilings out, I could see lights, new lighting you put in, a whole new sound system, I can see the walls knocked out and we're expanded over to the next side, I can see all kinds of things, but that's just part of being a visionary. You know, it's, it was Raul Reese was talking about this in, in one of the messages that I had to listen to when I was going to, or I didn't have to, but I, but I, we did. It, when we were going through school, he was saying that your vision will outpace your budget. 
So it's it's so I have to I have to be like, okay, God, I can see this, 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 this. Oh wait, what do you want? What do you want me to do? And then and then just say, and then he'll remind me, okay, this is what you have to do next. So take that next step. And what he tells us, he may, and sometimes he might say, go ahead and do that. But right now we just need to wait on what he's wait patiently on him. And Proverbs two. Oh, I didn't mean to finish my point. We need to sit patiently to hear his voice, because too often we speak before he can talk to us. Too often we can speak before he he will talk to us, because we'll sit there patiently, and I know it's happened to me. 30 seconds of being here quiet, and I'm not hearing anything. Lord, where are you? I can't hear you. Well, this is what I'm going to do. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. And he just sits there with, Mark, I don't want to talk to you, but you. So we have to wait to hear his voice. And his voice sometimes comes through reading his word. But in Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 9, Solomon said this, My son, if you take my words to heart and treasure my commands within you, if you pay close attention to wisdom and let your mind reach for understanding, if indeed you call out for insight, if you ask aloud for understanding, if you search for wisdom as if it were money and hunt for it as if it were hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and you will find the knowledge of God. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He has reserved priceless wisdom for decent people. He is a shield for those who walk in integrity in order to guard those on the path of justice and to watch over the way of his godly ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good course in life. Of course, it's Solomon talking, but it's the idea of God's talking to us. Wisdom comes from him. Pay close attention to the wisdom. If you don't know what wisdom is, read your Bible. Wisdom comes from God. We may think, we may think we know what's next, but he knows better. So you guys know that you've been with me for a while. We're going downtown, and we're going to find a building, and we're going to do this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And it didn't happen. <laughs> but God, you told me to go out here to do this. And he said, I know. But I got a, I got a plan for you. So part of that was building us up, getting us ready for the work he's called us out to do. It's, it's to bring us together, bond, to bring us a, a stronger bond so we can be a good team. So it's learning. Listen, he knows better. What's next? And sometimes he doesn't answer right away because he wants us to wait. He wants us to wait. Because we also, because what we find, what, what we find is that we may think his thoughts, what we may think is his thoughts, may actually be things that may just misguide us, mislead us. <clears throat> Who's to say what could have happened if we stayed downtown? If we said no to this building? <clears throat> Who's to say what could have happened? I don't know that we could have had conversations with people. In the past week, we've talked to probably six, seven people that we didn't have contact with when we were where we were at. God has a plan. God, His ways. We did his direction. It's not anything that we can fathom right now. We need to wait on him. God's timing, second point, God's timing is not ours. 
God's timing is not ours. Look at what. Look at what um, Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes three. What do working people gain from their hard labor? I've seen mortals weighed down with a burden that God has placed on them. It is beautiful how God has done everything at the right time. He's put a sense of eternity in God's and people's minds. Yet mortals still can't grasp what God is doing from the beginning to the end of time. I realize that there's nothing better for them to do than to be cheerful and enjoy what is good in their lives. It is a gift from God to be able to eat and drink and experience the good that comes from every kind of hard work. I realize that whatever God does will last forever. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing can be taken away from it. God does this so that people will fear Him. Whatever has happened in the past is present now. Whatever is going to happen in the future has already happened in the past. God will call the past to account. God's timing is not ours. God sees the beginning, the middle, and the end at the same time. God knows what's going to happen before we do. God has no timeline. A timeline is man's thought. It's, a, it's something that man needs. We need to have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We need to have a 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. So that we know, well, we can schedule things. We can work with things. We can't be, we, we're not like God. God, being all-knowing, he can handle seeing everything at once. But we can't. We can't battle with him. It's hard for us to grasp what we love. So God's timing, we may say, God, I need this right now. Come on, I need it right now. And you say, no, you don't. I got a better plan for you. And then he provides when we need it. Signed the lease Monday. We were moving in Wednesday. We were going to wait. We were going to move in a couple over a couple weeks. We were going to spin, spin, kick off next weekend. We couldn't because the building we were meeting in before had a water break. And they were closed. So we had to move in. We had a plan. Two weeks, we'll come in, we'll clean, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. And God said, nope, you're going in this week. So I say, hang on. But when we look at these passages, the first thing is, is that the burden that God gives us is for the lost, so we were to act now on this. God gives us a burden for the lost, so we need to act now on this. Not later. Now. What that means is that we need to take this burden that God gives us and rejoice in it, number one, because we know what, he's do, what he can do in people's lives. Number two, we need to share this with other people. It brings us to a new area. We have new contacts. We have some of the contacts that we've established downtown, but we have new contacts that we have now. So we're spreading the word a little bit at a time. And we're hoping and praying that there's where we've spread, where we've planted seeds, that those bloom and people are able to share it with other people. They were able to water it by God's word, to be nourished through his word in prayer. This burden that he gives us, it's not a bad burden. It's not bad. But it should motivate us. It should want us to be desiring like the apostles did. To be out there spreading the good news until we're so weary that we pass out from exhaustion. We get the rest that we need and pick back up and go again. 
It's a difference between being weary from exhaustion because you're sp sharing something that you want to and being burned out. I'm not talking about being burned out because if you're being burned out, then you're doing it in the flesh. And yes, we've all experienced burnout. We have. But isn't it better to be weary doing God's work and knowing that he'll provide the rest that we need? Sharing with other people. You know, I was listening to my pastor last week, and, and he was talking about this, and, 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 and it was like, yes, it's so true. His pastor made them write down a timeline, broke it down in fifth, every 15 minutes. He did it to us. My pastor did it to us. We were going through his call. Take a piece of paper, divide it in a timeline every 15 minutes. Write down what you're doing every 15 minutes. And when he, and he shared this with us, when he, when he wrote down what he was doing, he's like, yeah, I drove my car to work. Was that all you did? Drove your car? Why weren't you listening to an audio file? Why weren't you, why didn't you give somebody a ride and, and invest time in them? Oh, I ate lunch. Well, is that all you did? Why weren't you reading a book? Sharing that time with somebody else. The point is, is that we waste a lot of time where we can be sharing this stuff with other people or we can have be invested and have our stuff or grow our walks and listen to th stuff or reading stuff that will grow our walks. Not spend time reading love novels. There's, I'm sorry, I'm a guy. I have a hard time with love novels. This just doesn't nourish me. I, would get, I get off more on thrillers than I do on love novels, but still, that doesn't nourish me either. But good God's word does. And, and reading other pastors do. And reading theologians do. It helps me to grow in my walk. Am I saying, am I saying it's bad to read love novels or thrillers? No. Because, because we, need to, we need that too. We need to be able to relax. But what I am saying is, is that we need to invest as much time as we can to allow God to grow us, to prepare us, and mold us, and, and to shape us, and, and blossom. Blossom. Our labors, our labors have rewards, but they may not be right away. So the work we've been doing here and I know some of you have done some work last weekend, and I'm not discounting anybody's what anybody's doing. I'm not making say, well, I'm doing more and I'm doing less. Because I know that not everybody can invest as much time as we've been able to. And that's okay. But what I'm saying is, our labors are not going to go in vain. Our rewards are going to be better than we ever, than we ever thought. We're going to see some of our rewards... It may be seeing someone that we know change. Seeing somebody in our, that's close to us have God come into their lives and change their hearts and, and see them come out of addictions and abusive relationships and heal them. Or being abusive to themselves and see how God changes that and changes their mind. We, I long for people in my family to know God, to know Christ, to know who he is really, not who they fathom him to be, not to say, well, he's this, but we had this in here too, we had this in here too, we had this in here too, and we had this in here too, because what they're doing is they're pushing him out, and they're adding all this other garbage in there. Christ and Christ the Lord. But don't forget, we also have the eternal rewards coming to us. When we can stand in front of our judge and maker, our, our creator, and he can say, well done, good and faithful spirit. Enjoy, the, enjoy my kingdom. We also, some of those rewards, when we get to share our faith with other people, we get to see them right there alongside of us. And we'll give it high fives. <laughs> Thanks for telling me. 
need. Paul wrote to the Corinthian church in first, or again to the first Corinthian. Yeah, in first Corinthians, Paul wrote to the Corinthian church in first, uh, chapter fifteen. He said this: "I'm telling you a mystery. Not all of us will die, but we will all be changed. It will happen in an instant." In a split second, at the sound of the last trumpet, indeed that trumpet will sound, and then the dead will come back to life. They will be changed so they can live forever. This body that de decays must be changed into a body that cannot decay. This mortal body must be changed into a body that will live forever. When this body that decays is changed into a body that cannot decay, this mortal body is changed into a body that will live forever, then the teaching of Scripture will come true. Death is turned into victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Sin, sin gives death its sting, and God's standard gives sin, sin its power. Thank God that he gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What we see here will be different. Remember, this is, this is, this is short. This is temporary. Even where God puts us, the buildings he puts us in, they're temporary. This is all going to disappear when he comes back. The last trumpet. I know some of us have been seeing those little posts on Facebook talking about the, they, they hear these trumpet sounds throughout the world and some people are trying to say that this is the, this is the Lord coming or this is the trumpets that are being sounded for the judgments. And I don't know. I can't say it is. And I can't say it isn't. But what I do know is that when the last trumpet sounds, like Paul's talking about, we're going to be gathered. His children are going to be gathered. And we're going to be there. And we're not going to suffer pain anymore. And we don't know when it's coming. The early church lived as if he was coming back the next second. We need to live our lives that way. We need to live our lives in a way that if he were to come right now, we're ready. Because remember, his timing is not ours. Remember in Matthew 24, when the disciples asked him, when are you coming back? He said, it's not for me to know, it's not for you to know, only God knows. Only the Father knows. The way we see time, God does not, we're to wait to see what he does. We need to wait to see what he does. It doesn't mean that we don't do stuff in the meantime. It just means that we need to see what is he doing and then join, it, join in with him. He knows when to allow things to happen in our lives better than we do. And the time that we wait on him, it allows our faith to grow even more. Remember what the writer of our people said faith is? Faith is things, things that are not seen. I can't remember who said it this past week. But somebody I was talking to pointed out to me, and it was something that was so awesome. Faith, we walk in faith, and we step out in faith, and, and we move forward. But God gives us grace and mercy to see what happens. It's awesome. In 1 Peter, chapter 2, he said, So get rid of every kind of evil, every kind of deception, hypocrisy, jealousy, and every kind of slander. Desire God's poor word, pure word as newborn babies desire milk, then you will grow in your salvation. Certainly you have tasted the Lord is good. Desire the word like milk. Does it say, he's not saying stay as an infant and just continue drinking milk. He's saying desire the word like it's milk. How many of us like milk? Even if it, even if it hurts us? <laughs> if we could drink it all day, every day, I'm sure we would, right? <laughs> That's the way God's word needs to come into us. Just like that. And the last point, God's plans are far better than ours. God's plans are far better than ours. I heard it said, I made plans, but God was laughing at me. <laughs> Every time we make plans, God laughs. 
In Jeremiah 29, starting in verse 10, this is what the Lord says, When Babylon 70 years are over, I will come to you. I will keep my promise to you and bring you back to this place. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace and not disaster, plans to give you a future filled with hope. Then you will call to me. You will come and pray to me, and I will hear you. When you look for me, you will find me. When you wholeheartedly seek me, I will let you find me, declares the Lord. I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from the nations and places where I've scattered you, declares the Lord. I will bring you back from the place where you're being held captive. You've said that the Lord has given you prophets in Babylon, but this is what the Lord says about the king who sits on David's throne and about all people who live in this city, the people who are your relatives who are taken away as captives. The Lord of armies says, I'm going to send them wars, famines, and plagues. These people are like rotten figs to me, figs that are so bad that they can't be eaten. I will chase them with wars, famines, and plagues. I will make them a horrifying sight to the, all the kingdoms of the earth. They will become something cursed, ridiculed, and hissed at, and they will be a disgrace among all the nations where I scatter them. They didn't listen to me, declares the Lord. I sent to my servants the prophets again and again, but they refused to listen, declares the Lord. So listen to the word of the Lord, all you captives who were sent away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Yes, he's talking to Israel, and he's talking about when they're in Babylon, Babylonian captivity, but it applies to us as well. God knows the plans he has for us. He doesn't want us to be in Babylon. He doesn't want us to be in Egypt. References of sin in the Bible. He doesn't want us to be captive to our sins. He doesn't want us to be captive to addictions. He doesn't want us to be a captive to things that go against him. If we're to be captives, we're to be captives of him. Not of the things that, that, that take us away. God's plan is for us to call out to him. We call out to him and he'll heal us. He'll hear us. He'll provide for us. Don't be captive to your sinful desires. Don't be captive to those things that take you away. Grow in your relationship. I'm going to ask Bernard to come up to play a song quietly. I'm going to ask everybody else to bow your heads, close your eyes. I want you to think about this. Are you listening to him? Are you listening to him? Have you been have you been having struggles and waiting with him? Now is the time to ask him to forgive you. Now is the time to ask him to help you to grow, to have the strength see what he wants to do in your life. I'm going to ask you guys to take a couple of minutes right now and pray. And if you need to reconnect, take that time to reconnect with him. If you need to ask him for forgiveness because you doubted him, take that time right now. If you are having struggles, ask him to help you with those struggles. And in a couple of minutes, we'll take communion together. Sin, who knew no sin, that 
that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself, carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. the bread, his blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled, the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from Rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Amen. Father, we just come to you right now as we prepare to take communion. We thank you that you provide for us. We thank you that even when we, even though we don't understand what you do, that you continue to, to lead us in faith. We thank you that you know better than we do. And I just ask that you help us to continue to grow, to grow in our faith walk, to grow more in love with you, and help us to be examples, a shining light of what your Son has done for us. We thank you. Amen. Amen.
remember as we reflect this time of remembrance this time of communion is, 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 is a time of remembrance of what Christ has done for us and remember that when he was in the upper room for the last supper with the disciples at some point during the supper he, take, he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it and he said take and eat this is my body which is broken for you for the new covenant so as you take this wafer remember what he's done for us We also have learned that when we read about him being in the upper room, that after the dinner he took the cup of wine and he blessed it and he said, Take and drink this, for this is my blood which has been shed for you with the new covenant. Remember he said that he didn't come to change the law, he came to fulfill the law. So when his blood was shed for us, the law was fulfilled. He died so that we can be cleansed, pure as snow, when we, when, when we have that relationship with him. So as you drink of this juice, remember that his blood was shed for you, for me, and for everyone. Jesus, thank you so much that you would dare to die in our place so that you could restore us to your Father in relationship. We thank you for all that you do for us, that you've done for us. Please help us to never forget who you are. We pray in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you, may he shine his countenance upon you, and may you walk with him forever. God bless you guys.